This music is made up of a variety of timbres, layers, and textures, some of which sound electronic, cold, or metallic, and others are more familiar, more natural sounds. Each of these sounds is seemingly a product of a unique tool. However, this piece was composed using only one instrument, a modular synthesizer. This is a new day, a collaborative work between artists Suzanne Chiani and Caitlin Aurelia Smith. Chiani is a pioneer of the medium and one of the most prolific electronic artists of the 20th century. And Smith is an innovator within the modern electronic music space. Despite the near 40 year difference in age, both women used the same instrument to compose the majority of their work, a modular synthesizer called the bupla. This instrument is large, cumbersome, unwieldy, heavy, but it stood the test of time for one reason. It's rich. I enjoy using real instruments as well, and that's, I mean, I studied composition and, and orchestration, and um, always had the intention of writing for an orchestra and when I found modular synthesis it was um, my way of having access to lots of voices and sounds. Essentially, a modular synthesizer provides an artist access to any instrument they want, provided they have the understanding of how to achieve that sound. This all comes down to the way that modular synthesizers are composed, and the ways in which each of the individual modules interact with each other. Modular synthesizers are instruments comprised of any number of discrete components, or modules, each of which perform their own unique function in the sonic chain. A single unit can contain oscillators, filters, wave shapers, resonators, sequencers, LFOs, a, a vocoder, vocoder frequency, frequency follower, and even tied harmonizer, a okay. Marshall time modulator. Well, that, that means nothing to anybody but you. Uh... He's probably right, so let's walk it back a bit for a second. <laughs> In its simplest form, a synthesizer is an instrument which converts voltage into audio, and each one of the synthesizer's components plays an important role in creating the final sound. Oscillators convert the initial voltage signal into an audible waveform. Most oscillators perform a range of waveforms, the most common being triangle, sawtooth, and square. The filter determines which frequencies reach the end of the signal path. Though there are many different types of filters, most synthesizers will include a low-pass filter. This means that as the filter closes, low frequencies will be allowed to pass through, while high frequencies are cut off. In a typical synthesizer, these components are all aligned in a specific sequence. Oscillator to mixer to filter to envelope and so on. However, a modular system allows the artist to chain each component together manually in any order they want. That's what makes modular synthesizers special. They allow more sonic variety than any other instrument on the planet, and allow each artist to create something totally unique. Whether it be the music you've been hearing throughout this video, audio effects for movies, Don't get technical with me! or part of an ad campaign. Coca-Cola Pop and Pour. A modular synthesizer can produce basically any sound you want, either musical or otherwise. As with many other fields, the world of modular synthesis and electronic music in general is now dominated almost entirely by men. This topic is explored heavily in Tara Rogers' book, Pink Noises, Women on Electronic Music and Sound, which delves into the varied experiences of women in the electronic music industry. Rogers interviews a number of women throughout the industry, and though their roles and backgrounds differ wildly, much of their experiences are shared. Specifically, they are almost always in the minority within their given field. However, it hasn't always been this way. In fact, much of the current space surrounding modular synthesizers is built upon the work done by Suzanne Chiani in the 1970s. Positions seen as technical, such as computer science or math, have long been built up by women and been taken over by men as they become more profitable and desirable. Perhaps it isn't surprising, given the switchboard-esque appearance of a bukla more closely resembled the computer of the day than it did a musical instrument. However, it was the same mentality that Chiani used to carve out her space in the industry. 
So one thing we haven't talked about so far today is how was that for you being the only woman in the room with the machines? Well, it, it uh, you know, I was lucky that I was doing something that nobody understood. <laughs> you know? So that definitely gave me the edge. Uh, nobody could argue with it and nobody could interfere. Uh, so in, in that way, you know, I was lucky because I think if you, if you are a woman and if you want to move forward, it, it is, it's harder to be noticed if you're in a pool of men doing the same thing. You know, I think it worked for me as a woman because I didn't have any competition. I mean, there weren't even any guys doing this, really. Though Chiani's work was groundbreaking, it served to be more foundational for men breaking into the industry than it was for other women trying to do the same. And despite her own personal success, Chiani didn't feel that her work pushed the industry forward in any meaningful way. You know, one area, I got a feature film in 1980, and I was considered the first woman to be hired to score a major Hollywood feature. Another woman was not hired to do a major Hollywood feature until 1994. So, you know, the opportunities, the fact that I had this little edge by being unusual, I mean, gave me visibility. But even that isn't wasn't enough to change the gears of the music business in any way. This rang true for many years after Chiani's prominence in the 1970s through the 1990s. Electronic music and the use of modular synthesizers has become a very male-centric scene. But this is beginning to change. Caitlin Aurelia Smith is one of the modern leaders in modular synthesis, and a perfect example of the way in which the instrument can be used in new and innovative ways, even this long after its initial conception. Smith's work with the Bukla began after university, where she studied composition with a focus on guitar and vocals. While helping a neighbor clean up his old studio, she stumbled across his Bukla 200, which he offered to loan to her for a year. But she started using it mostly as a tool for processing instruments. Over the course of the year, she began delving further into its capabilities, and it became her primary tool for composition and performance. As you heard earlier, Smith used the bukla to mimic an orchestra. This led to a style of composition and breadth of sounds more naturalistic and further from the instrument's electronic roots. This naturalistic style helped to shape all of Smith's early works. However, her meticulous blend of electronic and acoustic synthesis wouldn't fully coalesce until the release of her 2016 album, Spheres. This is the opening track off of the album, titled First Flight, a name I think encapsulates the feeling of the album perfectly, as Smith's most fully realized concept yet. As with the other pieces discussed, this album is composed almost entirely using the bukla, which Smith describes as having the most human sound. However, the album was designed from the ground up to emulate nature, specifically Smith's interpretation of the sight she saw as a kid growing up on the west coast. The album paints a picture of a strange, insect-ridden land, not unlike that scene in Hayao Miyazaki's Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Track titles such as Wetlands, Rare Things Grow, Arthropoda, and Existence in the Unfurling all help to build this narrative as the album progresses. Smith's use of an electronic instrument in the bukla 
to emulate and recreate sounds of nature are what make her work so interesting, and what best exemplify her contributions to the medium. Ears is the culmination of this style, and is one of the best examples of the ongoing trend of innovation by women in the electronic music genre. It was also the final album Smith wrote prior to beginning her work with Chiani. The two met at a local community dinner without any prior knowledge of each other, and by the end of the night, Smith had agreed to work with Chiani. After just a short time, the two began work on their joint album, Synergy, which I will leave you with an excerpt from.